has there been any significant change in the past 40-ish years with respect to the demographics of the drivers at fault in these crashes? In other words, are we seeing a shift to younger people, to older people, any, anything that you can point to that, um, for which there's a, there's a causal explanation? So there are two groups that seem to be most at risk. Those are the 16 to 17 year olds and about the 65 to 70 plus. And the conjecture around those two, clearly we're talking about people who are just learning to drive and who are at an age that, you know, don't have that frontal cortex fully developed. Um, I have a friend of mine, Greg Belenke, always talked about it. it's like there's a hole in their head right there. So we're letting those people behind a couple tons of metal who don't have you know very little experience and just learning stuff. And at the other end, you've got people getting older who actually um, some of it may be aging specific effects. The other is more just how much they're actually driving and experience and that sort of thing. But those are the two main age groups that we see um, that are mostly affected. More men than women die in these crashes. Um, and again, there's a lot, so many questions with that. Some of it's segmented, some of it, to your point, the causal or contributing parts of that would just be us with hypotheses about, you know, what's actually causing those differences and things. What was the rationale for letting people drive at the age of 16? When, if you think about other things that are mandated by age, you have uh, an age at which you can join the military. You have an age at which you can vote. You have an age at which uh, you can drink alcohol, purchase firearms. So there are various things that seem, you know, tethered to age, but driving is the youngest. And I'm, uh, I've always wondered, you know, I didn't get my driver's license until I was like almost 18 because I viewed it as a badge of honor to ride my bike and take the bus everywhere. And I didn't want to be lazy. Like I was a weird kid in that way. Um, so I personally can't, re I can't relate to what it's like to be a 15 year old who's dying to get his license. Um, but, but tell me a little bit about that, that process and, and how that came to be. And, and for example, given the stats you've just shared, why that age hasn't been pushed up. I don't know you, so I'm like, I don't blow smoke. <laughs> and so I don't mind Tanya. Nobody's asked me that question before. And, and I'm going to go look that up now because nobody's really had a discussion around that. You know, the discussion is all about our education system, driver's ed, um, in so many other areas, we've got recurrent training, right? I mean, you have that in medicine, you have that for professional drivers, pilots, etc. How can we take these young people? I, you know, how they actually came up with that age, um, and came up with what are we going to do around that age to actually prepare these people for lifelong driving experience? I'm going to go look that one up. I, I really I don't know. That's the first time somebody's actually asked me that, but it's fascinating because I would also say part of your point is we've actually not gone back to question whether we need to change that or not, right? Which, as you know, yeah, comes exactly. up all the time. Maybe, maybe there was a reasonable, I, I can give you an example. I could pontificate and say, look, I mean, kids were working, you know, jobs, they needed to be able to get there and da, da, da. And it's like, okay, maybe all of those things are true. Is that true today? I don't, I don't know. Um, the other thing that has always struck me um, and oh, one thing you should know about me, Mark, I, I do love driving, um, and I love driving race cars and I, so I love all things motorsport related and I love doing, um, you know, I love drifting, like doing all of these things. And one of the things I've been trying to encourage my wife and daughter, my daughter's 15, so she'll be, you know, she, we're coming into this discussion and I've, I've been trying to organize a course for my daughter and some of her friends where, um, we, we get a group of really good driving instructors on a, you know, 20 acre skid pad to really teach them high end driving skills. Um, the stuff I certainly didn't learn when I was young, but, um, the things that I've learned driving a race car, which is everything not to do right? Like your natural inclination when this happens is going to be to do this and you will spin the car. And if you're lucky, nothing else will happen. If you're unlucky, you'll hit something else. And if you do this, you'll actually flip the car. Um, 
And I don't believe that you can just academically outlearn that. You have to just do the reps. You have to be on the track in the car doing it over and over again. Um, so again, I'm guessing that there has been some calculation that has said we can't justify putting those resources into mandatory driver education, right? It's just people have decided that we just can't request that kids learn that. I don't think so. I think it's what we went, the first part of your question, which is I don't think people have questioned from the beginning, why did we even start there? Are we preparing these people, you know, these kids well enough for this life experience of driving? And how do we revisit that in our knowledgeable, technology-driven society? How do we actually go and upgrade that, you know, to something that could actually save their lives and the people around them better? I don't think those questions have been asked, okay? And I'm with you, I think, the intellectual academic part of lessons, great, but unless you do the muscle memory part of the behavioral piece of actually experiencing it, I don't think there's any question. I don't mind telling you, um, since you're familiar with F1, you know Jean Todd, and um, yeah. he actually, I've gotten to know him over the years. He's got this high level panel, and what's been fascinating, he is now the UN's sort of ambassador for global road safety. Oh, I didn't know that. And he is, okay. he, he's just taken that on from, you know, not only his F1 days, but his Ferrari days, et cetera. But he's taken this on with a passion, you know, to like, how do we take what we've learned there and applied it? And why am I mentioning that? Because you already have the one idea about the videos. This is another one you should write down because this is one of those investments, right? If we get these kids early, it's a lifelong investment, right? Of the ones who actually learn how to do this and be better at driving than the ones who took sit in the course or do it online and never get behind until they're actually know where the, you get behind the wheel to know where the signal is, you know, where your turn signal, that, that's not really much education. And again, I think it's more, not that the analysis is done and we should write it off. I think it's people haven't asked those questions or taken the time. And I mentioned John just because, you know what? Let's send him a letter. Let's come up with what you're doing, formulate that and send a letter and say, so somebody at the very least ought to do this and let's study it and see if you can't come up with a course that would make sense. Because what we just talked about is that investment now could be huge in saving lives and costs.